Hey guys, I'm Ryan. I'm Adam. And this is Two Neighbors. So Adam, what are we watching today? I love this guy, Jim Jeffries. Uh, I love Jim Jeffries, the good old Aussie man himself. I saw him once, and that was in Newtown in Sydney, Australia, and I've been a Jim Jeffries fan ever since. That was actually the first time I actually heard of Jim Jeffries when I went. I didn't saw know him. you ever saw. I didn't know you saw him. Yeah, I saw really? him live. How have you yeah. not said that before. That's I don't cool. know, but uh, yeah, no, I uh, I saw him in Newtown, Sydney, Australia. Uh, my friends had tickets, and they invited me, and I was like, sure. And uh, I didn't realize how you know big and awesome he is. So he's fucking vulgar as fuck. <laughs> Good show, especially in per like in, in the show. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, fantastic show. Awesome. Uh, ever since then, I've I've really enjoyed Jim Jeffries and. Uh, We've watched some really good ones. Yeah. So, uh, guys, please, uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. We're putting out a video every single day. It takes a lot of work, so it really helps. Um, and yeah, this one is called Fully Functional uh, Girlfriends uh, by Jim Jeffries. All right, cool. Let's, let's do it. Uh, let's check it out. Hello. Hello. G'day. G'day. <laughs> Sit down. How you going, mate? <laughs> that, was, that was very nice. <laughs> Alright, let's start with a joke. <laughs> Every time I sneeze, some asshole in the room goes, Do you know the sensation of a sneeze is one eighth of an orgasm? I don't know if you've heard this myth, but that's what people say. That's why when I'm fucking a chick, I keep a bit of pepper on the bedside table. <laughs> and as I'm coming, I chuck it in the face. <laughs> Because she deserves something. <laughs> well, so I need to. I used to, for a while, date Michael Phelps' ex girlfriend. And that sounds like a joke, but that's true. I dated Michael Phelps' ex girlfriend. And I'll tell you something about fucking Michael Phelps' ex girlfriend. You put no effort in. Because no matter how good you think you're fucking her, you're not fucking her as good as the greatest Olympian that's ever lived. <laughs> this guy, six foot eight, has size 20 feet and holds his breath for a living. Right? You know, he's just fucking her and drinking Red Bull and eating chocolate bars. And I'm there coughing cigarette flame up on her back. <laughs> And she always used Mike against me. I call him Mike now. <laughs> she goes, Mike bought me this handbag. Mike bought me these shoes. And I'd be like, Mike looks like he has Down syndrome. <laughs> Why don't you ever mention that? <laughs> and we don't know for sure that I'm not a better swimmer. <laughs> I've never timed myself. When I get in the pool, it's for pleasure, not to show off in competition. Right? I can tell you if I ever finish a lap of an Olympic sized pool, I'll be really, really tired. And you can only assume from that that I've been going extraordinarily fast. <laughs> Mike took me here, Mike took me there. Mike cheated on you with Miss California. And I could never do that to you. <laughs> it's not that I wouldn't. <laughs> I just couldn't. It's Miss California. That bitch has got to be fucking tasty, eh? Like, like, I'm on the TV a bit. I'm a minor celebrity. Miss Delaware is coming to mind. <laughs> Miss Delaware. I don't even know where Delaware is, but... <laughs> She sounds fucking ugly, Miss Delaware, don't you? <laughs> right. I've got a girlfriend now. She's in the she's in the room. Uh, I got a girlfriend. She's moved into the house. A serious relationship. Uh, I'll tell you what I've been doing with the last twelve years of my life. For the last twelve years of my life, I've been travelling around the world having sex with random women. <laughs> my girlfriend has told me that that's a really sad way to live your life and kind of depressing. And it's weird, you know, because it felt like fun. <laughs> I remember a lot of smiling back in the day. I have vivid memories of high-fiving a lot. I, uh... But thank God she's come along to tell me that I was mistaken. <laughs> Maybe you might be asking why would I want to settle down then I, I, I'm at the age, you know, 35, where I'm thinking in the future I would like to be a father 
one day. I think I would be a great dad. I really do. I just don't think I'd be a good husband. And there's a problem. Oh, and she has the child and then you divorce her in the first year. That's automatic bad dad territory. It doesn't matter how many ball games you take the little cut to, you're a bad fucking dad. <laughs> so I think the only way up for me is to like meet a woman, marry her, get her pregnant. She has the child. And then if she could die, <laughs> that, that would really help me out. <laughs> Because your kid couldn't hate you then, because I'm doing my best, your mum's dead! You know? <laughs> but I've looked into it, and not as easy as you might think. It turns out that terminally ill women don't want to get pregnant. They're all about them and what they're up to, and their issues. The terminally ill are very fucking high maintenance, if you ask me, so... I need to find a woman who doesn't know she's dying, and that's a whole new set of complications. So I need to befriend a doctor. That doctor will have like a cancerous woman come into his office, and he'll be like, oh, you're fine, get out of here, you're wasting my time. Congratulations on the weight loss. Then he'll ring me up and go, I've got one! <laughs> I give him a couple of free tickets to a show, we call it even, be charming, I'd get her married, I'd, I'd get her pregnant, she'd have the child, and then if she could die, that would get me out of a bind. <laughs> like, I don't want her to die during childbirth, I'm not a fucking animal, you know? Like, <laughs> like a few years later, after the kid could walk and talk and wipe its own ass and open the fridge and take care of itself to a certain extent. <laughs> And I'm thinking I want a daughter. I think that would suit me to have a little three-year-old daughter, Eliza. I've already named her. So picture me, <laughs> That's Jim me. with little Eliza, struggling through life. Hey, just the two of us. The mum's fucking dead. She's long gone. It's just the two of us. I do what I can. I take her on the road with me because I can't yeah. live with anyone. She's all I've got left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking adorable! <laughs> there isn't a woman in this room that doesn't want to suck that guy's cock. That's about as sexy as I get with the dead fucking wife raising a little girl. And I would play that card every single day as well. Like, I'd be like in a diner with little Eliza and as the hot waitress walked by I'd go, No, mummy's never coming back. <laughs> Then when the waitress came up, I go, no, 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 nothing for me, thank you so much. But I think someone might like an ice cream sundae. <laughs> it's her first birthday without her mother. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay, we're, we're okay. Sometimes, I think she takes care of me. <laughs> evil, evil. A lot of fun. Happening later on that evening, I'll be getting my dick sucked and a free Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And I raise that kid good too. No fucking around. Raise that kid the same way that I was raised. I beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> my mother broke both my brother's legs. Not both my brothers. One brother! <laughs> both his fucking legs. <laughs> Scotty was under the bed going, I don't want to go to school. And mum's going, get out right now, you're going to school. You don't think I can make you? And then Scott went, fuck off! <laughs> Now, Gunter wasn't taking that. Gunter. <laughs> Gunter she Jeffries. reached under, grabbed him by the shirt, pulled him backwards, yanked him upwards so his shin shattered against the bed frame and the floor. Now, on the upside, didn't go to school that day. <laughs> Got a couple of extra days off to relax. <laughs> Fucking soft. You're soft people, I'm telling you. You just keep this self esteem and giving every child a fucking medal if it runs a race. And it, 
there are two fucking lots of people in this world, winners and fucking losers, right? You might not be a winner at everything, you might not be a loser at everything, but you won't find out what the fuck you're good at if they tell you you're fucking good at everything. <laughs> right? <laughs> See, you here in America are the most powerful country that's ever been. You're coming number 27 in education, and that's disgusting. Right? Someone cheers. But you're coming yeah. number one in your breeding stupid, confident people. <laughs> They're the worst employees in the fucking world. Alright? So this whole we're number one shit, call it a fucking day, America. China's <laughs> coming to get you. <laughs> And you can't stop China, mate, because they're number one in education and they're the bottom of the list in confidence. <laughs> and entire society rotates around honour, respect, dignity. Do your homework, learn your fucking violin. <laughs> so who do you want putting your car together? A little nervous Asian fella with a drill going... Zzzk. <laughs> or this guy... Zzzk. Perfect. <laughs> it's interesting you can't perspective. With but... the Asians. It's not that they're smarter. They're not smarter. Their infrastructure is infinitely better. <laughs> the Asians do something that we don't do. They acknowledge stupidity. If you have a classroom of American children, little Johnny isn't keeping up with the other kids, what do you do? Come on, Johnny, you can catch up. <laughs> we believe in you. <laughs> what do you think they do in China when fucking May Pang isn't towing the line? <laughs> Get out of the way, you down. Go over there and make some shoes and help our economy, but leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> you don't acknowledge stupidity and I can fucking prove it. We have a thousand people in the room by a show of hands. Don't do it ironically. Don't do this sarcastically. Only do this if you truly believe it. Put up your hand if you truly believe you have a stupid child at home. <laughs> None of you! <laughs> it's statistically higher than that! <laughs> but your child isn't stupid, not your child. Your child has a learning difficulty. <laughs> That's the definition of stupid. <laughs> if you have difficulty learning, <laughs> that's what stupid is. <laughs> if you find it hard to put information in your head and recall it when you need it, that's textbook stupid. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with being stupid. Oh, I was a special kid in school. Like a smart <laughs> asshole, <and> he... <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> Let's just acknowledge these people. You know, now I've given you a good point. Many of you are thinking, maybe our kid is a dumb kid. <laughs> You're picturing him in his little league game, he's in the outfield digging a hole with a stick. <laughs> I've told you before in one of my other DVDs, but this is how you find out if your kid's a dumb cunt, right? <laughs> Are you a dumb cunt? Is your wife or your husband a dumb cunt? That's what your kids are. Your kids are dumb cunts just like you, except they'll achieve even less. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for Jim Jeffries. Wow, Great. that was, that was fantastic. Good. That whole Michael Phelps thing just ruined me. <laughs> He's quickly becoming one of my favorite comedians now that, uh, and now that we're doing this, I can't even like watch it outside of here because I want to watch like and react to this stuff. But, Michael uh, Phelps, the guy holds his breath underwater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his lung capacity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a really good, uh, really good uh, clip. And that's, I mean, that's one hell of a comedian to like, you know, throw people under the bus. Like, you know, Michael Phelps, like, and his ex-girlfriend, like, personal lives, and then him cheating. Like, that's, uh, you know, that's gutsy to fucking, you know, say that about people and on he, your set. He shit on their whole country too. <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, he does that all the time with yeah. the U.S. All yeah. the time, but they apparently love it. They even gave him a show, the Jim Jeffries show. There you go. Which was like a new segment, like, but that was funny. Um, I liked. It. I don't know if it's still on. 
But it is funny. My parents even like it. My yeah. parents are in like their 70s. You know, and oh, I yeah. love Jim <laughs> Jeffries. So, great Jim Jeffries. Guys, if you have more Jim Jeffries, you know what to do. Hashtag my request with the URL link down below uh, so that we can click that link and do your video. Ryan, what else should these lovely people do? Like, share, and subscribe, please, guys. It really helps, and we really do appreciate that. Yeah, that's it for our show today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe to our channel, and we will see you next time. Later, guys. <laughs>